Hello, everyone. Welcome to this video for topic three, part three versus part nine buildings. You found this video because it was linked for you in the course notes you downloaded from Brightspace. So make sure that if you've just clicked on that link, which you accessed on Brightspace, download those course notes to your device of choice, because you never know when you're going to lose access of Brightspace or some other technological issue. Okay. But before, without further ado, let's get started. Very well. So uh, again, I want to thank you for being here. You could have been anywhere else, right? This is precious time for you and you're spending it with this video. I really appreciate it. So let's see where we are so far, right? With the story. Well, we started off with topic one, where you were introduced to the Ontario Building Code as a document, what it's there for, what its purpose is, how it's arranged and how it's referenced, right? How all the contents are referenced in it not by page number, remember? Topic two then was all about major occupancies, right? I'm listing them here, but it basically was about determining major occupancies. And remember the tip, use Appendix A. Okay, so now part three versus part nine building. The question is, why do we care about this topic? Well, it really goes back to uh, the very fundamental thing about this introductory course, right? It's using two volumes at a of a huge document. And because we're so new at this, it's very hard to figure out where to start in this document. What page do we flip to, right? What item or what portion of the building code do we start looking at? Well, what I would like to do is start off with this topic with giving you the first place to look at when you're analyzing a building. So specifically, if you go in Division B of the Ontario Building Code, that's in Volume 1, you'll notice that the two largest portions of Division B are Part 3 and Part 9. So, if right from the beginning we can identify whether the building we're analyzing is a Part 3 building or a Part 9 building, then we know that that's where we have to go to. So what I mean is that if we analyze a building and we go, hey, it's a Part 3 building, and that means you get to flip directly to part three to look for any valid references in there, right? You don't have to flip through all of the parts of division B. Or if we find that it's part nine, then you know that you can go to division B part nine and flip to it. And everything you need to find is going to be in there. Okay. Now we need to figure out what the definition for a part three building or a part nine building is. And how do we find definitions in the building code? Well, this was discussed in topic two. So if it's not sounding familiar, make sure you go back to topic two. But basically, there's a portion of division A in volume one that contains definitions. Specifically, it also contains definitions for part three building and part nine buildings. You find them under sentences 1.1.2.2 for part three buildings and under sentence 1.1.2.4 for part nine building. I think those are not sentences, sorry. I think those are articles, okay? Anyways, let's learn about this. How do we distinguish between a part three building and a part nine building? But before we do that, I would like to give you the definition for three items, okay? The three items are building height, building area, and occupancy. We use these words commonly in our everyday speak but the building code uses them in a very specific way, which I want to identify for you. So let's start with building height. How does the building code identify and define building height? Well, as for anything else that the building code does define, you'll find this under division A, specifically under article 1.4.1.2. Go look at it. I'll wait here while you pause. I'm not going anywhere, but go look at it. What that definition basically says for building height is that it has nothing to do with the measurement of the vertical dimension of that building, but instead it relates to the number of stories. That is the floor levels of that building. Interesting, right? So for example, say if I'm showing you the south uh, elevation of our ACE building, according to the building code, the building height of this building is not the vertical measurement in meters, 
Rather, it's counting the number of stories of this building, in this case, six. The building height for this portion of the ACE building is six stories. Interesting, right? Okay, let's move on to building area. Building area, what does the building code say is building area? Well, let's go look at the definition. Again, Division A under Article 1.4.1.2. Well, according to that definition, read it, please. It refers to the greatest horizontal area you get from this building. So what that means, and I've uploaded a number of images for you in the course notes, which go into very good detail about this. Look at your course notes. Basically, think of your building as if it were one giant cookie cutter. Okay. If you were to press that building all the way down into the ground, all the way down, flat, flat into the ground, the opening that it would leave into the ground, that is the building area, right? It accounts for all the jutting outs and jutting ins. It's the largest perimeter included by that area. Okay. That's what building area is. And the last one that I want to define for us is occupancy. Well, if you've been paying attention, we covered the occupancy in topic two. So if it's not sounding familiar, go check it out. Topic two is in your course notes. You'll find it on Brightspace. Okay. So now that we have these definitions for building height, building area, and occupancy, we're now ready to distinguish between a part three building and a part nine building. Again, the definitions for both are contained in Division A of the Building Code. That's in Volume 1. And I indicate exactly where here and in your course notes. Read them, please, because that includes all the sentences, clauses, and subclauses within those articles. But here's what I'm going to recommend to you, okay? What I recommend to you is that we learn to differentiate between Part 3 and Part 9 buildings by doing this. Let's try to prove that the building under consideration is a part nine building. And if we cannot, then it means that that building is a part three building. Rather than trying to prove one or the other according to their articles. Let's only try to prove part nine. And if we cannot prove that it's a part nine building, it means it's a part three building. So specifically, if you go and check out the definition for a part nine building, under Division A, Article 1.1.2.4, and all of the sentences, clauses, and subclauses under it, this is what it says. A building is classified as a Part 9 building if the building height is no more than three stories. The building area is no more than 600 meters squared, and the occupancy is one of C, D, E, F2, or F3. All three of these conditions must occur for that building to be classified as a Part 9 building. Okay? So that means that all three of these have to happen in order for that building to be called a Part 9 building, which means that you get to flip directly to Division B Part 9 of the building code to find all the information. If even one of these conditions do not apply, even one, then that building is a part three building. That means you have to go to part three of the building code to find all the relevant information. Well, guess what? You're ready now to try question three in homework set one, which is uploaded for you on Brightspace. You'll find it in the same place where you found these course notes, okay? There's also possibly some practice quizzes for you on Brightspace. They're not worth any grades and you can do them as many times as you want and they'll help you get even more practice in this. But don't forget, homework is your friend in this course. Great, I think that's it. I wanna thank you so much for devoting your time to this. I know it's precious time, that is, and I appreciate that you took the time to do this. Take care, have a lovely day, and we'll talk in another video.